All right, everyone. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and for today's video masterclass, simply going to focus on the somewhat... <laughs> Did you see my brain just shut off for a second there? The sometimes somewhat confusing nature of creating presets in Premiere Pro um, in, well, I'm going to try and get to five specific areas here if possible today. There's actually even six. But primarily, we're going to focus on creating presets for color using the Lumetri color panel and the various ways that you do that, creating presets when using just multiple different types of video effects, creating presets for audio effects, creating presets for track heights. Yes, you can actually have presets for your track layouts in the timeline, which a lot of people are unaware of. And then as well as creating presets, simple presets for exporting that you reuse over and over again. So as always, we are simulcasting to you, coming to you live on YouTube, Behance, uh, Twitter Periscope, and my YouTube channel as well. So thank you so much for joining. If you want to follow the conversation, that is happening over at behance.net slash Adobe Live. So please come over there. That's where I'll be following all the chats. That's where we'll be answering the questions for you. And we've got a lot of stuff to cover today. So just real quickly, want to give a couple of shout outs and a couple of hellos. Clément Arnaud, hello, good morning. Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, track heights, oh my god, yes. Always these little hidden, hidden gems, things that people just don't know about because they're kind of just squeezed in there in a random menu. Miguel Villanueva, hello. Anushri Jadav, nice to see you. Steve Festus, always lovely. Wade, all right. Jack Watson, hello. Umalaja, great to see you. And we've got Latoga and Dynamic Flight. Mystic 3RD, oh, Mystic, how are you doing, man? Wade Acuff, nice to see you as well. And uh, we've got Eric Nathan coming to us uh, from Bellingham, Washington. So thank you so much. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to Premiere Pro and get started today. And I think you're going to, uh, you're going to dig this because there's a lot of cool stuff or a lot of cool things around presets that maybe you're just unfamiliar with. Maybe you're already using them, maybe you're a pro, cool. Uh, if you're not, there's just a lot of little cool things that you can do with presets. And the real key here is, you know, especially as someone who shoots kind of with the same cameras, the same gear, kind of has my particular look that I want to go for most of us when we create stuff, if it's for ourselves, especially, clients are different, of course, you might have kind of your signature grade, your signature look, your signature EQ, mastering EQ. Maybe you have your signature, you know, bitrate preset that you always use when you upload to your respective social networks or when you share with others. All of these things can be created as presets, which means that you don't have to reinvent the parameters, redo the parameters every single time. So uh, we're going to start with some Lumetri color presets um, in the Lumetri color panel. Now, as I always like to say, I'm in a modified version of the color workspace. Uh, you will see the little workspace bar at the top of Premiere Pro. You can, of course, access those workspaces from the window menu up here. And by the way, these can also be saved as preset workspaces. So any modifications that you make to the interface, you can simply save new workspace and it will do that. Also, if you modify any of the existing ones, um, as you modify them, again, every time you modify it, it kind of caches that modification. So you can either reset to saved layout by using this option here, or just double click on the preset name up at the top here, and it'll, re it'll reset it to the last saved state. Okay? All right. Very cool. What is up, Callisto? Hey, Carrie Latimer, how's it going? Ahmed, hello. Okay, hold on. I've got devices slipping on me here. All right. So here I've got some footage. Uh, this is from this uh, kind of uh, temp trailer that I cut for a friend of mine thinking about doing a, an adult adventure camp business up in Alaska. Showed this on the stream a couple times. And let's just say that I want to just create, you know, some kind of warm preset here in Lumetri. Maybe I shot everything on this particular day. Everything is kind of cool and bright, very beautiful, but I just want to warm up these shots. Doesn't matter why we're doing it. We're simply going to create a visual preset in Lumetri. Okay, so let's just make a couple of corrections here. Uh, just start with some temperature, warm this up. What I love about these controls, again, if you're familiar with doing this in Lightroom, if you're just catching Terry's stream earlier, this whole basic corrections panel is essentially 
the first section of the develop module of Lightroom. So, you know, if you're new to color grading and color correction in Premiere, this should all look and feel pretty darn familiar to you. These are effectively all of the exact same sliders, just reimagined and kind of retooled for a video workflow as opposed to a stills workflow. All right, so we're gonna increase the temperature, kind of warm it up a little bit here, maybe increase contrast as well. I'm even gonna go a little more extreme. What's nice is you'll see that it's really starting to bring out the detail of the clouds up here. Of course, we've got our bypass, so we can kind of quickly see before and after, decidedly warmer, maybe even pop the highlights a little bit on the top of those mountains, really let that snow come through. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I really wanna do here. Maybe I'll add a little bit more saturation and go ahead and do a slight little cinematic vignette okay so before after cool love it i want to apply this look to all of the shots on that day why should i have to rearrange all those sliders i shouldn't i can just create the preset so we'll come up to the top of lumetri up here and we're going to go to save preset very simple now keep in mind and i'm going to do this a couple of times while you have the ability to save the preset from Lumetri, the presets themselves don't appear there. They will actually appear in the effects panel. And furthermore, you can also save the preset from within the effects controls panel, which we're gonna to go to in just a second. So as with many things in the Adobe CC apps, lots of different ways to kind of perform the same operation, all right? So in this case, let's call this uh, Alaska Warm. And then we have this option here for type, all right? Scale or anchor to endpoint. Now this is not going to affect us right now because this is a static preset. We're gonna do a version of this in just a moment where we're actually going to keyframe some changes over time. But if it's a static preset, you don't really have to concern yourself with this type thing because nothing is changing. You don't need to anchor changes to an in or out point. It doesn't matter. This is a static, set it and forget it kind of preset change. And we can add a description if we want to, which will show up um, in one of the metadata fields. Not gonna bother with that right now. Click OK on that. And now if I go up to my effects panel, which I have docked down below, under the preset menu, which is right at the top here, you will see Alaska Warm. And there's the one that we just created, okay? So if I were to shuttle to another shot from that same day, all right, I can simply take Alaska Warm, drag it on top of my clip, and just like that, we've now added that same preset, okay? So very simple. So your presets appear in the effects panel, all right, under presets, okay? Now we're gonna expand upon this in a little bit. Um, you'll notice that, of course, there's a whole series of folders under presets. You have the option here to create a new preset bin, which will then again fall underneath this preset header. So, and you can give it, give it an, uh, a unique name. So it can be, you know, my Alaska grade presets, my California grade presets, my blah, blah, blah. We're gonna do that in a couple minutes when we get into audio here. But just to let you know that you can create your own custom folders, bins of your own presets, but they will always appear here under the preset panel. Now. You'll notice if you go to the flyout menu under effects, this allows you to also create custom bins. So with a custom bin, you can move your presets from, well, I should, let, me, let me rephrase that. You can copy your presets from the preset menu into a custom bin, so they can exist in multiple places. If you use a preset bin and drag them in there, it actually physically moves them, okay? All right, so we'll come back to that in just a little bit. All right, so that's just creating a static look, all right, with no changes over time. Let's see what the chat is saying here. All right, does that all make sense? Yes? Marcella Wiley, oh, that's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. Glad you like it, all right. All right, just checking to see. <laughs> Jan Eric, my whole life is one big preset. Hey, nothing wrong with that, all right. Clément, great accent for my name, dude. Ah, well, merci. Okay, all right, everything looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna go to those scale and anchor options, which many of you probably have never touched. Maybe you wondered what they did, maybe you didn't care. This is where this gets really cool because as is the nature uh, of working with color, it is not uncommon that you have to make changes over time. This is why color grading, you may also sometimes hear to it referred as color timing, right? Unlike a still where your lighting and everything else is fixed and doesn't change, 
if you're filming someone in a scene, particularly if you're outside or something, but even indoors, you know, as you're moving the camera, the lens light is is changing over time. And sometimes you have to make adjustments over time. So maybe you want to do that in one of your presets, or maybe you're going for a stylistic change and that's why you're doing that. Okay. So in the case of this one here, I've still got all of my settings, all right, my warmer temperature. I'm at the first frame of this, uh, of this particular clip. Here we are in the effects controls. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keyframe some changes over time. So I'm going to twirl down the basic corrections tab. Oh, and by the way, this is actually pretty cool. Um, if you come over to filter properties, you ha we have the, this is new. This is as of uh, what last week or two weeks ago, the most recent update to Premiere. We now have this option here to show only edited properties or show keyframed properties. This is so useful because as you can see, Lumetri gets really big and busy. So if I say only show me the edited properties, all I see, oh, this is so freaking good, are the things that I changed. Ah, oh, so good. Gosh, where was that years ago? <laughs> Took a little time, but now we have it. So I'm going to change the temperature over time. So at this first frame, I'm going to set uh, a keyframe here. To I'm going to toggle on the animation here, and you can see that it drops a keyframe right there. All right. And then as we get towards, let's say, about three quarters into the shot, all right, and that's important that I'm, I'm telling you around three quarters of the way in, all right, I'm going to cool it off significantly. So we're really going to go the other way, all right? So, and what you'll see is it already created that next keyframe for us. So it's going to be changing the temperature over time, all right? Warm to cool, all right? Warm to cool, okay? And then maybe while we're at it, maybe we'll even, uh, maybe we'll even drop the highlights a little bit too, okay? And I can have those, I can have that occur a little bit later. All right, maybe we'll do it at the exact same time. That's fine. Start with the highlights here towards the blue section, and then let's just drop these down. All right, way down. Just trying to make a very obvious change here, okay? Warm to very cool. And I can even adjust this. Maybe I want it to be warmer a little bit like, so you see it a bit more after it comes out of the fade. Very warm, gradually gets cool, okay? Make sense? Everybody see what's happening there. Awesome. Now let's go up to Lumetri. I'm going to choose Save Preset, okay? But instead of doing it from here, I'm actually going to do it here. And as I told you, you have a couple of options here. So under Effects Controls, you can save a preset here, all right? Or if I simply just right click on Lumetri, there's only the one effect here, I can choose save preset. So again, three different locations to save the preset. But for this, because in this particular case, we've got some animation, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Because now what I wanna do is I need to choose how I want this to preserve that animation. So we're gonna call this Alaska, warm to cold, okay? Now, we're gonna start by using scale, all right? And actually here, I'm gonna abbreviate this so it doesn't get too long. AK, warm to cold, scale, or just do S for scale, okay? What that is going to do is it's going to save those changes, but because I chose the scale option, Regardless of the duration or length of clip that I place these changes onto, this preset onto, it's going to start warm, gradually get cold, but it's going to get fully cold about three quarters of the way into the clip. All right, remember I told you, right? We can see that the keyframe's there approximately 75% of the way through the clip. That's what scale is doing. So if I come over to this clip here, let's go over to our effects, under presets, all right, there's the one we just created, AK warm to cold scale. Let's go ahead and drag this on here, all right. Starts out very warm. You can see it right away. Gradually gets cooler. Look at the mist. Ooh, very nice. You can actually really, really feel that blue in the mist right there. Changes over time, all right. Let's take a look at the effects controls and notice 
on this clip that those keyframes appear relatively in the same location, all right? You're, you're seeing the final keyframe approximately 75% of the way in. Now, those clips look to be, you know, almost the same duration. So maybe you're not quite, I don't believe you, I, I don't see it. Okay, let's do it on this one. Come back over to effects, aka warm to cold, drop it on here. Got very, very warm. Look at this shot, I love this. By the way, all of this footage, with the exception of the stuff that looks like GoPro, the non GoPro stuff is all, uh, it's all Adobe stock. And then the GoPro things are actually stuff that my friend shot and that I shot in Alaska last year. Okay. So once again, play this back. All right. Very obviously gets from, goes from warm to cool. Okay. Now this, obviously this particular clip, it's a lot shorter. It's very dramatic though. I love it. And you can see there's that little kind of, uh, Lens, natural lens flare that was happening right there. All right. Cool. Let's go to effects controls. And once again, what you see is that the relative positioning of those keyframes, the last change is approximately 75% of the way in. So that's what scale does. Scale will maintain proportionately the changes over time, regardless of duration. This is, this is great because again, if you're trying to, you know, a lot of times when you see specific edits that are cut to a beat, you may have things that are changing over time. This is done a lot in music video where they morph color or, you know, just do, I, I use morph, but you know, they're, they're, they're basically modulating changes kind of in time over time. And because things are being cut to the beat, the clips are effectively similar lengths, but that doesn't matter. The changes, will feel in time with the beat because you're using that same relative change over time, every time using scale. Does that make sense? All right. I like that effect on the forest. Looks like something dangerous making its announcement. Yes, Jekyll and Hyde, I agree. All right, very cool. Sweet. Okay. How's it going, Mensa Moody? Okay. <laughs> Cal, it's not that I didn't believe you, but yeah, scale is cool. All right, very nice. Now, let's take kind of the other version of that, all right? So we don't have to go to the original again. We already have this, uh, we already have these, uh, these parameters set on this particular clip here. Let's go ahead and save a new preset. But instead, we're going to choose anchor to endpoint, okay? So we're gonna call this AK, W to C, A for anchor, okay? So now, if I go up to effects, maybe let's place it on this one here. All right, on this last clip, let's drag it on here. All right, now, right away, you should notice a difference in just how it visually appears in the effects controls. That final change isn't 75% of the way, okay? It's anchored to the endpoint and the duration of those keyframes lasts as long as it was originally authored for. So if we made a temperature change over 35 frames, that's what that's showing. That's what anchor is doing versus scale, which will take those 35 frames and stretch or compress them relative to the duration of the original clip, all right? And you can verify it visually really easily. If we go to that middle clip, take note of the keyframes, all right, looks approximately 75%. The first clip, again, it, it doesn't even visually change here, right? First clip, last clip, oh, look at that, squeeze together, right? Because this clip is much longer, it's not scaling it, it's just maintaining the original duration and anchoring it from the end point. Notice you could also anchor to the out point, so it can do this at the end of the clip as well, okay? It's like something is happening, right? <laughs> Good one, Tim. Okay. Stephanie is live. What is up? How are you doing? JK Villar, nice to see you. All right. Rich Cronenberg. 191943, uh, very th uh, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate that, okay. Big Ranava, nice to see you too. Dev32, welcome, okay. All right, so that's color presets, scaling, 
and anchoring. And by the way, this scale and anchor thing can be applied to all different types of effects as well as audio presets. So with that in mind, uh, let's go to effects presets, okay? Let's come back over to this initial clip here, go into our effects controls. And I'm just gonna leave, I'll leave the Lumetri uh, stuff on here for right now, that's fine. Okay, and maybe we'll mute this so you don't have to keep hearing the, uh, the audio as I shift this. All right, so one of the other benefits is, again, if you're doing like stylized work or maybe you can use this on things like motion graphics templates. Maybe when you bring in video or you bring in graphics or maybe you, you have a specific kind of, you know, blur to sharp kind of effect that you like. You see this again on a lot of YouTube videos. You see it on commercial stuff as well. Right, starts blurry. It's another it's another way of sort of leveraging transitions. Blurry to sharp or, you know, a, a way to animate out. You can start sharp and then it, you know, mosaics. This is very 80s and 90s, but this is still used. Um, my kids watch a ton of like kids YouTube stuff and I still see the mosaic effect in and out being used a lot. Is it cheesy? Kinda. Does it serve the purpose? Yeah, totally. All right. So maybe we want to do, you know, a combination of those things. So let's do, um, in this case, let's start with a blur. A lure, okay. Start with a blur. And uh, I'm going to drag a Gaussian blur on top of this, all right? And while I'm at it, I'm also going to grab, <laughs> because I said it, the mosaic, which I personally don't use, by the way, but I don't know why that popped into my head. It just did. So now you all have to pay the price, okay? That phone doesn't want to stay up there. Okay, by the way, notice I'm not seeing any parameters for these things. That's because I still have the filtering on. So I'm currently just going to turn on show all properties. By the way, if, yeah, if you filter and you're like, where, where are all the parameters? They've destroyed, the, it's broken. No, you just got to change what you're viewing here in the effects controls, all right? So we're gonna go back to show all properties. Let's twirl up Lumetri. Okay, so first of all, let's, uh, Let's turn this mosaic off. Wait, how, 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 sorry. So many blocks of mosaic. Okay. Uh, let's maybe start with some Gaussian blur. So again, maybe we want to do like a full on blurry thing. And I'm, I'll keyframe this. I didn't say this is something you would do. <laughs> okay. So a very simple blur in, all right? And then maybe we'll do a, a mosaic out. In fact, is there a different, is there a different one? That's it? I thought there was, I thought there was a different one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same thing here for the mosaic. So let's start here, set some keyframes. And then as we get towards the end, all right, let's go down to like this many horizontal. Not that many vertical, that's gonna look weird. It's so fast. Yeah, that isn't really what I wanted it to do, is it? It's not really what I was hoping for. Maybe I won't use this mosaic. Let me do something else. Cheesy, cheesy effects here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Stylize. What's in there? Texturize. Glow. Distort. Sharpen. Mirror. Why not? I don't think I've ever used this one. Okay. So maybe we'll do like an in out thing. So we can change the reflection angle here, right? Okay. <laughs> so cheesy. Okay. So let's undo that. So let's start here. Okay. And as it gets to the end, oh, whoops. As it gets to the end, let's do this. 180 to black like that, all right? And that's kind of our transition to the next clip, <laughs> which also has a flash to white. Again, I didn't say this was stylistically wonderful. Just trying to animate some things here so you get the idea. Okay, 
So now what we can do, we can choose to save the Lumetri change as part of this, but I didn't time the Gaussian blur and the mirroring to the timing of Lumetri. So these can be completely independent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Gaussian and then I'm going to hold Command down on the Mac, Control on the PC to just select these two effects here. Right click and once again now I'm going to choose Save Preset, okay? Now again, typically the default is scale because that kind of assumes like, yeah, you probably want, if, especially if you're doing like animate in, animate out, it would make sense that you want them to work and to scale accordingly based on the duration of your clip. So I, t typically scale is, is, is the most useful, right? Um, and you can always edit the keyframes after the fact anyway, whether you use scale or anchor. So for this, let's call this Gauss mirror, all right, mirror out. All right, click OK. All right, come over to something like this shot here. Or maybe this one with the birds. Look at the birds up in the trees. And come over to our presets where you now see Gauss mirror out. Drag it on here. Starts out blurry, right? And then mirrors. <laughs> that transition going into a light leak, I mean, I wouldn't use it, but it doesn't look completely terrible. Okay. Easy, right? And again, if we take a look at this clip here, because we use the scale option, as I was explaining, right, we kind of have a Gaussian at the in so we're going from blurry to not, we want that to always happen at the very beginning over X number of frames, right? Stretched accordingly. Hey, what's up, Louis? The Godfather. Gaussian at the beginning, mirror at the end. It maintains that spatial relationship and the time relationship based on the duration because we used scale, okay? Super easy, very, very nice, all right? See, everyone's talking a lot about cameras and stuff here. All right. Someone asked me on my YouTube, what am I shooting with these days? I am a, I see we just had some stuff for some Nikon love. I am a Nikon shooter, have been since 2012, converted from Canon, <laughs> brought over, persuaded, coming over from Canon. Um, and uh, I shoot with a D850. By the way, Something which many people probably have never noticed. This is dopey, but I just think it's one of those fun things and it always reminds me of the concept of flying faders with audio. When you have keyframe changes, particularly in Lumetri, this will go, this will be the same for any effect. But if you take a look here, right, pay attention to the sliders, right? Contrast, highlights, and temperature. When we have those changes, you can actually see the sliders moving as I'm scrubbing through the video here. So it's it is that practical? Well, sure, because you can one, you can actually see that it's doing something. Also, it's just cool. It just looks cool. It's cool that you're seeing the sliders move as if you were dragging them with your own hands. So just a nice little visual thing right there. Nice. Cal, you just got it. Duh. <laughs> Presets are like textile sheets, but for any effects properties. Yep. Simple, right? Okay. Okay, so that's stacking effects. And again, leveraging anchor and scale. Really simple, done here inside the effects controls. To select multiple effects, hold down command or control on the PC, select the ones you want. Of course, you can also reorder these, right, in advance. It will maintain the order that they're in, um, the order that they appear, not the order in which you select. So the order that they appear in the effects controls. And, and they will always appear in the effects uh, panel. Okay, now this next one I'm going to show you, this is something which at the beginning, as I mentioned, most people are completely unfamiliar. And uh, I love showing this one. And my buddy Carl reminded me of this yesterday. What's up? Oh, Stephanie, you're a cannon shooter. Yes, I seem, to, I seem to remember that. And I was for ages, you know, especially in the beginning of the, uh, the DSLR boom. You know, uh, my first my first new camera in that era, 20, 2009, 2009, 2010, was uh, the Canon, the 7D. 
couldn't spring for the 5D Mark II at the time. I wound up getting a 5D, I think, shortly thereafter. But when I found my love for it, uh, 70 was it. Man, I loved that 70. That was such a great, even though it was crop, crop sensor, uh, I loved it. I, I just loved it. I loved the 5D too. Um, and those are my last two Canons before I went over to the newly, at the time, newly branded, particularly for video, uh, D4 and D800. Um, Louis using BMD 4K. Yeah, and you know, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, they're, they're amazing, you know, and they shoot raw. By the way, we of course now support B-RAW via the third-party plugin. We also now support natively on Mac and Windows, ProRes RAW. So this is another one of those little sneaky hidden things, got released two weeks ago. Not like there was a fanfare about it, so, but if you're uh, capturing with like an Atomos or an external device in ProRes RAW, bringing your footage into Premiere previously, weren't able to do it, now natively Mac and Windows, you can bring in and work with ProRes RAW footage, which is awesome, okay? Catherine Lacoste, what is up? Mujahid Mansouri, doing well, thank you. All right, okay, so track height presets. Now, this is one of those things that maybe if you stumbled upon it, you'd find it, but this is something that I use and I erased all of them so I, so I could make some new ones for you. But I'm sure like many of you, I get very frustrated by adjusting track heights in Premiere. Um, we have, we added some nice keyboard shortcuts, right? So like if you wanted to say, you know, just adjust the track height of one thing, if you hold down option, is it option? Yeah, so option. And then I'm using my, a gesture on my mouse here. All right, this gesture. will adjust the height of a single track, the single track that you're hovered over, all right? And the existing tracks will maintain their exact height, okay? So maybe you always like video track one to be big because two, three, four, five, et cetera, are always overlays and B-roll and adjustment layers. Whatever you want, you know, you can customize the heights of these. So holding down option adjusts only one track. Um, if you hold down shift, all right, I got to see if this is doing what I want. Shift will do, yes, a global adjustment of all tracks, okay? And if you do shift command or shift control, this kind of does it smoothly. And I thought this also maintained differences in the heights, relative differences, does it? Yeah, it does. So you can see like how I have video two and four are different, different heights. So when I do shift command, it retains those differences, but it's again, smoothly, globally adjusting all of them, uh, like in their kind of same, same perspective. Okay. So that's great. And we do this a lot, but sometimes it's like, especially when I'm kind of done with the edit and I want to work on audio or I just want to work on audio and I already have all the audio tracks minimized coming in here and doing what I just tried to do there, like doing this and readjusting and, or maybe you grab the wrong one. You think it's up or it's down or, you know, whatever it is, maybe you grab the divider. So you didn't make audio bigger. You just added more real estate for video. That stuff just kind of drives me a little crazy, right? So what we can do is we can create, track height presets. Where do we do that? Up in the wrench menu here inside the timeline. And what you will see is you already have a couple in there, literally a couple too. Minimize and expand. So the default minimize will do just that, right? So you get this nice minimized view of whatever, however many tracks you have just like that. Doesn't really show you much Barely you can see titles, audio, you, that's not showing me anything relative to the waveform that makes any sense. Um, that's minimized, okay? If we go to the other default, expand, that does kind of like a, you know, a minimal expansion, basically allows you to see the frame, uh, see a decent representation of the waveform. But again, I might have specific heights that I want for editing. And I was just saying like, maybe I want an audio editing preset. So I'm gonna come over to my video tracks. I'm gonna minimize all of those. And then I'm gonna shift command, all right, to adjust the height of all the audio stuff, all right, so that they're nice and big and uh, very much in focus, okay? So now I can come over here and I can say save preset. 
and this can be audio work. You can also assign keyboard shortcuts. What? Yes. So if you're a shortcut person, you can assign these specific track height preset shortcuts. All right. And these can all be modified in the keyboard shortcut modifier, uh, which you can find. Uh, is it under the Premiere menu here? Yeah, so on the Mac, it's under the Premiere menu. On Windows, I think it's under the Edit or File menu. I can't, or maybe it is under the Premiere menu. I can't remember, but uh, it may be in the exact same location. Keyboard shortcuts here. So let's go ahead and save that, all right? So we'll go ahead and save. This will be audio work. I never do keyboard shortcuts, as many of you know. My brain just doesn't retain them, okay? Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and minimize not totally the audio ones, but now let's maximize the video ones. All right. So that's maximum. I mean, that's kind of huge, but that's okay. Adjust the divider here. Everything's really big, so I can barely see two tracks of video in front of me, but that's fine. All right. Save preset. Big video. Okay. All right. So, and by the way, I'm hitting that tilde key on the US keyboard as I'm hovering over this panel to go full screen. You don't have to be full screen to enable these presets. Um, it just makes life easier, obviously. So in this case, let's say I want to go back to the, you know, that minimized look. Okay. Whoops, wrong menu. Let's go to our wrench menu right here. Minimize. Everything is minimized. Okay. Now let's go to audio work right there. Okay. And again, if we go full screen, now you can see nice and big, all of our audio tracks expanded. Oh, sorry. It's I'm, I'm kind of blocking it over there, but you can, you can see what it's doing. Okay. Like that. You can of course scrub vertically here. And then if we go back to the wrench menu and say big video. Okay. Now the video tracks are massive, right? Can't even fit them all on my screen here, right? And the audio tracks are the same, but in a minimized kind of state, all right? So track height presets. That's a, I, have, I have another one over there too. What was that one? Viewable wave plus frame. Yeah, so this one I just kind of did even. Everything's about the same, kind of just nice, easy to, easy to view. Um, especially as you zoom in, you know, I, I, I like having all the detail. I always, by the way, that's just my preference. Um, I always like to see, uh, which the option is here. Yeah. Continuous video thumbnails, you know, based on system, sometimes you can't, it, it, it's a little heavy to try and redraw all of those, especially as you zoom and perform other operations. Um, some people just like head and tail like that. Uh, some like just video, you know, just a head. I don't like that because then it's just too much color. That's just really, that bothers me. But I know some, some people work that way. I like to see continuous. Yeah. And then as you zoom in, you know, you just, you just see more detail. Okay. Very cool. Check for questions here. All right. Louis, got to see you uh, at the IBC. Oh, Louis, you know, it's been canceled. IBC has canceled. They themselves canceled. We Adobe has already put out the message. We won't be doing any shows, live shows um, through the end of the year. But you know, IBC itself, sadly, has been canceled this year. It's crazy. This would have been my uh, 20th, 19th. I can't even remember. Going to make such an audio preset right after this class. Perfect. Ah, nice. Even UI. Super handy, says Cal. Yep. Couldn't agree more. All right. Very cool. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, Jan Eric, what's more important is, are you Coca-Cola or Pepsi? <laughs> I don't drink soda. So, but when I did, it was Coke, it was, it was Coke Zero. Which is really bad for you, but tasty. And prior to that, in the 90s, I used to drink Diet Coke with lime. <laughs> Or as we called it in the studio, DCL. Audio nerds, you know. So, so true. 
Okay. Very cool. All right. So uh, last two things. Audio. All right. We've already done uh, color presets, effects presets, track height presets in the timeline. Now let's do audio and uh, export presets. Okay. So just as with uh, video presets, and let's go back to our audio work here. Um, you know, very commonly, you may you may be using some specific presets that you drop on dialogue files, or maybe you have again a particular EQ that you like when you have a, a music bed, right? Something that kind of scoops out the mids a little so that dialogue can sit in there nicely. Maybe you have a compression preset that let you like to drag onto things. Whatever, it could be effects style presets, you know, uh, modulation type presets. Whatever they are, the point is that you can create them and, and have them saved and reused. You can even export these presets so that others can use them too, which is worth pointing out. Um, in fact, here, Again, if you were to right click on any of the presets inside of the preset panel, you can see that you have the option to import and export. All right. And if you were to go to export presets, you'll see that this will create this PRFP set file, which you can then share. All right. Really cool. Like, so someone goes, oh, I love that, that look, that color, those native Premiere effects. Oh, yeah. Could you, set, could you share that preset with me? Yes. Someone sends it to you. You import it right here, done. Really simple, all right? Very useful. I've done this with Terry before. We've created presets and shared them. It's, uh, it's very, very useful. And it's no different with audio. So let's do just, again, um, some random things. Uh, so let's say I want to add some analog delay to this. So here's the soundtrack that I scored. I love this soundtrack. Actually, I think I showed, I showed the composition of this. Or did I compose this online? I can't even remember. Anyway, I composed this quite a few years ago, but I want to add a little more impact. I want to add kind of a, almost like a slapback delay. So take a quick listen. So I want to add a delay, a slapback that's going to be um, like uh, um, eighth notes. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. All right. So to do that, I'm going to use the analog delay effect. So I'm going to let's go back to the beginning here. All right. Let's drag this onto our music clip. Go into effects controls. All right. And of course, you have the edit button here. So this will pull up the effect itself. And there are, this is, I don't know if this is the default setting or whatever was used last. By the way, of course, you can also choose individual parameters here as well. So you can just see them right inside the UI, all right? And in fact, I was going to say this needs to be about, based on the tempo, about 200 milliseconds. Um, let's maybe adjust the wet output a little bit. And... Uh, just going to back off on the trash, back off on the feedback a little bit. And let's take a listen. And we're using the tape method. So this should have kind of a nice warm, warm echo. It's like I wasn't even trying. I just nailed it. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, that's added in there now. All right, sounds good. Okay, so let's say that I always love adding that analog delay, okay? And while I'm at it, I'm even going to add some really intense limiting, all right? <laughs> now, you know me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an audio purist here, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't for, you know, for the sake of it, make things sound bad. But I do want to just show you as I'm stacking different things together here. So maybe I want to add some compression after that delay. So let's come into our custom setup here. And we're going to do uh, a 20 to 1 ratio. Oh, isn't that interesting? Look at the UI flickering as I make that adjustment. All right, probably going to need quite a bit of output gain. Uh, let's do about 
400 millisecond release. And let's take a listen. So really punctuating those. All right, it's way too much. I'm doing it on purpose, but you can really feel that compression, that limiting now, right? Why is it limiting? Because our ratio is above 10 to one, right? Remember compressor limiter, same, same device, same effect. Compression is ratios below 10 to one, limiting is ratios above 10 to one. So we're just really slamming it. So you're really hearing those ding, 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 and all the, all the quiet stuff is loud. The loud stuff is the same. And then we're using about 15 decibels of makeup gain to just punch you in the face with this, okay? So just as we did with the visual effects before, I'm going to select these two, all right? And we're going to save a preset. Again, it's scale. So let's do uh, tap delay limit and click OK on that, all right? And now, of course, we have created an audio effect that lives under presets. Now, here's the thing. That starts to get very confusing because, of course, the audio effects are placed in the same location as the video effects. Now, it does have a, a different icon. You can see it's got the little speaker icon versus the film icon. But this is where things, for me, it just starts to get very confusing, right? So this is where I create a new preset bin now, I don't really use audio effects presets in Premiere. As you can see, I don't have any in here. I do most of that on Audition anyway. But I'll just call these audio effects. Okay. And now I can take that uh, tape delay limit and drag it in there. And again, when you make a preset bin, notice it took it out of this list and now it lives here. I've got another one that I made before. All right drag this down into audio effects, that appears there, it's taken out of the menu here, all right? Versus if I go to custom bin, which appears at the bottom, okay, random stuff, and let's drag tape delay into random stuff, and as I told you now, this is basically a, it's a, like an alias, all right? So it exists here in audio effects, but I've also added it to this random stuff folder, okay? All right, but when you make the preset bin, it appears under presets, which is ultimately where you want it to go, okay? Real nice, real simple, all right? I made this other one here before, just called audio. Again, it's pointing to an existing preset there. So really simple, really easy, very, very flexible. Why can't every streamer have as good sound quality as Jason? Ah, oh, thank you, Jan Eric. Well, you know, I, I am I am the audio dude, so. <laughs> it's very nice to hear though. It's a lot of uh it's a lot of process, right? Uh good times. <laughs> All right, Steve, the clips in this video are amazing. Oh, thank you. I can't take credit though. A lot of them are Adobe Stock, licensed Adobe Stock clips. And again, some of them are footage that I shot uh, in Alaska as well. So a combination of GoPro and iPhone, uh, among other things. So, but thanks for that. Yeah, it was great stuff. Again, Adobe Stock, just amazing, amazing uh, landscape video footage. A lot of drone stuff too. If you're looking for 4K drone, no shortage of that. All right. So uh, you all, you also want an Alaskan adventure. All right, I'll let my friend Adam know. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, you're like living, living in the wilderness. I did it myself last year. I told him, I was like, we got to make this a thing. It's so good. This should be a, it should be a series. It should be a, you know, like a, a show. Okay, final, final bits here. And I'm, I'm right on time. We've got five more minutes. So export presets is one of the most common things that this is something that I do use. Now, I actually 
90% of the time use our own native export presets when I'm exporting for YouTube or wherever, because we design them with those specific social networks hand in hand. So they're really just kind of optimized for delivery there. You can always modify them. I know some people like, nah, the UK for to UK, the YouTube 4K, I mixed words there. The YouTube 4K preset, the bitrate should be higher. There's more compression when you upload. Okay, change it. Either way, regardless of whether you use our own or you make your own, it's very easy to do. You can also import export those. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're going for consistency in your delivery. Um, it's also is really useful if you're gonna be batch exporting, because then you just choose your preset and go, right? So with our timeline selected here, let's go up to file export media. Mensa Moody, my master track is at zero dB, no? So the master uh, fader is at zero, but um, I had a, a digital brick wall limiter on there, the Waves L2, which I have capping it at minus two. So I typically always deliver my YouTube content, any content with the final output at around, I give about two decibels of headroom, but every, this, this particular track was already mixed and mastered super hot. So it's already as loud as can be. So I just leave that extra 2 dB of headroom because when you go to something like MP4, any kind of compressed format, particularly with audio, um, you need a little bit of headroom because you're going to have some transients that will reshape when they go from 32-bit to 16-bit, uh, and especially as well as when you're changing sample rates, things change, and then going to a compressed file format. So it's always a good idea to give yourself a little bit of headroom so that you don't have any clipped samples. Sometimes clipped samples are inaudible. So, you know, years ago, in the old school broadcast days, they would bounce stuff. They would do a, a check and they would be able to run it through kind of like our amplitude statistics in Audition. And if they saw that it had clipped samples, they'd come back to you as the producer, editor, whatever, and they go, hey, you need to re-export this. It has clipped samples. These days, the way that things are delivered, they're a little more forgiving, but especially I imagine, I haven't worked with them directly in quite a few years, but like places like BBC, RTL, SVT, I imagine those checks are still in place. And if they get something that has like, you know, hundreds of clipped samples, regardless of whether you can hear it, they would ask you to re-export. It just makes sense. You don't want, you don't want any potential distortion in your audio output. All right. So here inside of export settings, again, I always use our, uh, because I'm usually working in 1080p, I, I happen to love our YouTube 1080p full HD preset. Now, one thing that I often do, as I've shown here on the stream and on master classes uh, in the past, is I will often publish directly to YouTube from Premiere. And you can see right here, if I check this box under the publish tab, I'm already signed in as myself. So I can choose what channel it goes to. Here's all of my playlists. So here's my master classes. So I could export this right now to a master class playlist. Title, description, privacy, tags, custom thumbnails. I can do all of this here. So we don't have any presets with the publishing options selected because that's relative to you. So to make one of those, all right, you simply come up to the top of the export settings right next to preset here and you'll see you have the option to save or import, all right? So if you click save, all right, it's gonna ask you to give it a name, and in this case, you know, it's the copy of the YouTube. So I could just say copy of YouTube 1080 with publishing settings, all right? And then you have the option here to save those publishing settings and also save effects settings, okay? I'm not going to do that. I already have a couple of those saved in here, but I just want to show you. Let me cancel out of this for a sec. So if I come over to custom, up at the top, you can already see 1080p export for social, YT plus Vimeo. So that means I already have a preset where I've already enabled publishing to those two services. Let's go ahead and let's check that out. Let's see if I'm correct. All right. If it works, go into publish. And sure enough, those two are already selected, okay? Um, I have a preset that I use whenever I do Adobe Stock, right? So I export out of Premiere, some 4K stuff. I wanna go right to Adobe Stock. It'll use Sensei to auto keyword and do all that for me. Go ahead and choose this preset here under the Publish tab. So not YouTube, not Vimeo, not Twitter, right? Adobe Stock, all right? 
Now it's enabled. In this case, I, I haven't done it since I've uh, updated, so I would need to re-sign in. But it's already enabled this function. And then you saw there was that other checkbox for preserving effects. That's this over here. So if you add any of these things on your export, so you can add looks or LUTs on your export, right? So we often do this if we're wanting to, you know, if we're shooting super flat and we want to give our, you know, our client the idea of what this might look like when it's graded. Maybe we add, you know, um, I'm trying to find something that's really obvious change here. Maybe we add a specific look to this. Oh, that actually looks pretty nice. All right. So maybe we'll, again, this is kind of the original sort of flat. And then here's the final graded or a somewhat final looking grade on that export. This could even be for dailies, right? A lot of times clients seeing flat footage doesn't look very good. So that's what that other checkbox is for. You can also do image overlays, name overlays, time code overlays, and everything else. All right. Very cool. All right, my friends, that is it. That is all the time we have. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this masterclass. Again, we talked about creating presets for color using Lumetri, all different types of visual effects, uh, track height presets, audio presets, and export presets. We've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia coming up next. So have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.